Up to this point, we have successfully unclobbered four passages from the Bible that have traditionally been understood as creating a negative position against homosexuality. We have taken a fresh look at the destruction in Sodom and Gomorrah and, and learned that the story had nothing to do with men and women who were born gay and who were taking part in, in loving, mutual, same-sex relationships. We explored the book of Leviticus and, and learned what it meant for something to be an abomination. And again, we were struck with how the Levitical Code was not addressing the issue of sexual orientation, nor offering any statement against loving, committed, same-sex relationships. And in the previous session, we unpacked the tricky passage in Romans, only to find that Paul was not only not making any sort of a definitive statement against homosexuality, but he was actually arguing against any attempt at casting such judgments toward the other. And one more time I say, what we find is that nowhere is there any attempt to address the issue of people being born with same-sex attraction or people of the same sex who are taking part in a loving, committed, mutually honoring same-sex relationship. If I'm sounding like a broken record, it's intentional. <laughs> While admittedly it may not settle the issue altogether, I must continue to insist that we acknowledge how the Bible does not seek to address the issue of people being born with same-sex attraction, and therefore cannot be expected to offer a biblical stance on the sinfulness of, quote, being gay. To the question, is it a sin to be gay? The Bible simply answers in silence. Furthermore, I must also continue to insist that we acknowledge that the Bible, in these clobber passages, does not provide insight into the biblical writers, nor God's beliefs, about two people of the same sex involved in a loving, committed, mutually honoring relationship. What we do find is condemnation of distorted same-sex sexual practices with regards to idol worship and orgies and exploitation. But we also find condemnation of these sorts of practices with regards to heterosexual sex acts. Which brings me to a point that I want to make before we go about the business of unclobbering our final two passages.